Storing your planes in your garage can be pretty tricky because they're big and you wanna use your space efficiently. Dave came up with a really cool wall mount system and it works for him in his garage. Dave and I spent some time talking about my design requirements and because I wanted a mobile rack, he came up with this solution. He basically took his wall mount system and put it on rollers or casters so it can move around. So Dave, why don't you walk us through the design, tell us a little bit about the materials that you used and what your design thoughts were on making a rack that's flexible for big airplanes, small airplanes, and just walk us through how this thing works. Well, first thing, we need to be able to move the shelves because you need to adjust for different size airplanes. Mm -hmm. And you can use either the double or the single like I got. I like the double a little better. Single's cheaper. Uh -huh. They both work the same as good. That's the first thing. Then second, uh, based on experience, you want them, the airplanes far enough to if you need to, if you got big airplanes, the landing gears can go in the other side of the rack. Uh -huh. Like, for instance, like this. So the landing gear can go on the other side. On the wall mount, you can't do that. Right. On this freestanding, you can. Right. Then the other thing is you can put an airplane, this airplane on this side can go in that direction, and the other airplane on the other side can go in the other direction. So you don't have problems with the tails lining exactly. up. You exactly. You don't have a conflict there. Then it needs to be sturdy enough, of course. So the cross bracing, this cross bracing, I did it small on the corners, which is strong enough. The strongest way is to do it across from corner to corner, but that would have interfered with our landing gears. Mm -hmm. So that's why I got away from that design. I did that and basically that's it. Just kind of depending on the kind of airplanes you have. If you fly the smaller ones, you can do it a little narrower, but this is, this is good. This is a very good design here. I came up with this based on years of using my several different oh, racks. The wall mount. Yeah. So, okay, so the, the track system is closet made. That's a closet made shelf yes. track. From Home Depot, Home yes. Depot. Yes. And you got the double, width, double wide. So the double wide yes. is a reference to the two slots on the track. And the reason we did that, stronger, right? That was the main reason for uh, strength? The strength is not really the main reason, but the surface that the airplane Has is to touching, the, because this, the, the we use the foam, this is the insulation from the air conditioner uh, pipes. Pipe insulation. And it's not very hard, so it on a heavier airplane, you'll end up resting, it'll mash and it'll end up resting on the, on the edge. And we don't want that. So we don't want that, and definitely it is stronger, uh -huh. and it doesn't move as much as the other one, this and that way, so it is a, it's a better job. Okay. This this is a better job. Okay. The other one does work though. It works perfect. So why don't you talk us through how you have these little rails set up? Because it wasn't just as simple as putting the shelf uh, braces on there. You also did some extra work. Yes. Because we have two. It's already better um, that we have two rails instead of just one for right. surface to provide a flat surface and soft, so the airplane doesn't get damaged. I put this guy goes in here. And we measured that at what, five eighths, right? It was about it, this is about five, this one is just a little thicker, but yeah, five eighths, five you know, eights. whatever fits in here. This one, I had to widen this just a little bit, uh. just a hair, so it's a little tight to put it in, which, you know, but it'll go in, but this just a little thinner would work better. Okay. Okay, so then the air conditioner tubing, you know, uh -huh. for condensation, and it just slides right on. And your airplanes are protected. You have to kind of put it in and squeeze it just a hair and get it. There you go. Okay. And it goes on, push this back, and then you have no way of damaging. It doesn't matter how heavy it is. So nice it's cushy spot for the airplanes. You're cushy. not gonna dent the, dent the uh, shrink covering or the exactly. balsa or anything on the bottom. All right, let's talk yep. a little bit about the wood and the dimensions. So what kind of wood is this? I think it's called two by two. Two by two? I don't remember the, the type of wood. I think it's pine, but it's the cheaper one that you can buy at Home Depot. The cheaper? finished because there's a cheaper that's really bad and that's ugly. rough yeah and then there's another one that's really pretty but it's like two three dollars per foot you don't want that some like red cedar or something like that don't quote me this you'll find it's it's pretty it's nice and it's not terribly expensive it's not cheap either home depot home depot yeah, yeah this is home depot and they are, think they're called two by twos but that's like trade size. Yeah. They are not two by twos if you measure them they're like one and a half by one and a half you got the two by twos you did cross braces up at the top. Yes, top and bottom. And everything obviously square there. You put the center brace in just to prevent bowing and yes. any other motion. Yep. And then you put cross braces down there at the bottom. Yes. And those are all 45 degree cuts. 45, every and one then of them. Same thing down here at the base. You did that for load distribution. We talked about this. I was worried about sag in the middle, but Dave correctly pointed out yep. that with those cross braces, you distribute the load 
not from just being there in the center, but also to the edge. Yes. So the only bowing risk is from this corner to, to that brace. From here out. There you go. Because that makes one piece, that, that, uh, yeah. that truss, it makes a truss and it makes one piece. Plus, it helps the stability of this guy. Yes. So it does two things. And then you also put casters, four casters. Yep. What size casters are those? Do you remember? They're probably three quarter to three one quarter, inch. Three quarter one to inch. one inch with little uh, foot brakes or the little brakes. All in Amazon. Yeah, Amazon. little brakes right okay. there, Amazon. If We'll put, we'll put uh, links for that, those casters in the description for you. And then uh, wood screws that you drilled out, obviously, to prevent splitting. You drill those first. Every one. Every, every one, one is drilled and pilot hole is drilled. Every single one. Yeah, you got to do that or that's going to split. Yes. No, no two yes. Ways if you're it. doing a rough construction, you're not worried about, but every single one of these was drilled and pilot drilled. Move the rack around. Let them see. Let everyone see how easy <laughs> these racks really. We talk, He talked about putting some casters in the middle. And uh, the reason he opted not to do that was to avoid a teeter totter effect if the floor was unlevel for whatever reason. Which they're usually just enough unlevel to do that. To make it teeter-totter, yeah. 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 So yeah, perfect, yeah, they spin, they roll. And, Airplanes um, on both sides, yeah. that side, this side. Yeah, they're strong, I got up on it. <laughs> it's not, gonna, I weigh 185 pounds, so this is not going anywhere. That's strong. You can't put enough airplanes here to match 185 pounds. Right, so he's got tracks on both sides, so dual-sided uh, rack, and it just goes up against the wall pretty much the same way his wall mount goes. Speaking of your wall mount, in case somebody doesn't want a mobile version, why don't you tell us a little bit about your wall mount? How does that work? Absolutely, for somebody that doesn't want to move these guys around and be more versatile and have wall space, all you need is the two verticals, and you don't have to use the two by twos, but you can use the two by ones. Two by ones. And you can use the single track or the double track, like I said, and uh, just attach them to the wall. Start at the top, decide your distance, because this goes screwed right into the wood. Uh -huh. Right into the wood. And I put it on edge. I didn't put it flat. I put it on edge because it gives me a better... If you put it flat, it flexes more. On edge, it's stronger. Okay. And I like to use the toggle bolts at the top for, for strength, but easy anchors come in 50-pound and 75-pound strength. So the easy anchors, which are the screw anchors for drywall, yep. they're perfect. And just put them, put them at the top, put a level, and start drilling you them say down to toggle, the bottom. toggle, are you talking about those metal butterfly? Uh, toggle metal? bolts. Yes, the, the ones metal that you butterfly? push in and they open okay. in the back. And then you use the plastic or the metal screw-in ones? Yes. Yeah, I'm familiar with those. Yeah, these, these I love these guys. Yeah, those are awesome. They're I love like these guys the for drywall. Anchors. They're beautiful. Yeah. And as you can see, this is 50 pounds per anchor on on a diagonal. Right. On a diagonal. On a, you know what I'm talking yeah. about. Okay. So it doesn't even need the toggle bolts. That's I your just sheer, put them sheer load. It doesn't need them, yeah. yes. You can either do mobile, which obviously a little bit more work because you got to build a, the base and the casters, or just go right on the wall and put, put some uh, load-bearing capability up top. That's what he did right up on the top above the Vanquish up there, right on those tops. And then he put in regular drywall anchors to keep the wood up against the wall flush where there's not as much load. One thing you guys got to keep in mind, if you use the single track, you can only buy these brackets up to 12 inches anymore. Oh, 12 so inches. So that's another reason why I wanted to go with those for you. And these are 18 or? I can, 20 inches. 20 inches. You can get them up to 20 inches here. You don't need any more than 20 inches, especially if you had the landing gear that you can stick on the other side. Right. Now here, what I did on the top where the Vanquish is, what I did is I joined two and I pop rivet them. Mm -hmm. So okay. I got this one and I put another one, I cut it and I put another one and I pop rivet them. So you can do that with either a piece of aluminum or steel, just pop rivet or screw it and extend it. Got but it. you need to know you can't get them longer than, than, than 12 inches, the single track ones. Those up to 20 inches. Okay, let's talk a little bit about dimensions. I'm gonna put a copy of Dave's cut sheet and his drawing in post so you guys can see it. But Dave's gonna talk a little bit about dimensions real quick. Uh, top to bottom, what do we have from top all the way to the base? How tall is it? Okay, it's about 94, 95 inches tall. 94, 95. Yeah, the reason why I say 94, 95 is because I cut the wood at 94, and but then we got the floor and we got the extra wood here, you know, the extra one and a half inches or whatever. So yeah, 94, 95. Okay. These come at a standard 83 long. Okay. The longest one you can get. The tracks. So, You're talking the about tracks, the tracks. Okay. Right. So you can play with that, right? right. 
And then at the bottom, I did not take the track all the way down to the bottom because it's it's useless down yeah, at the bottom. Right. And I put this brace up in the middle higher here so the landing gear could go down there. It wouldn't interfere with the with the cross brace. Okay, so how wide is it, Dave? It is 20 inches. 20 inches wide? Yeah, from here to here is 20 inches plus the wood. Okay, and that lines up with the base. So 20 inches wide, top to bottom. Top to bottom, 20 okay. inches wide. From the front to the back, how deep is it? Okay, I designed it at 40, but it looks like I ended up making it 42 because I just had the wood in two inches. 40, about 40, 42 inches. 40, 42 yeah. inches. Either front way, to back. It, okay. that's fine. And the braces, Dave, how long are the braces? All the braces, all eight of them, are 10 inches long. 10 inches long. On the longer part of the brace. They're cut on a 45, on the longer, they're 10 inches long. Okay. And none of this has to be that dimension. This is just what I chose. Right. It can be a little bigger, a little <laughs> smaller, it doesn't matter. That's the thing, guys, when you build these kinds of things, it doesn't have to be exactly the same as Dave's design. This is just a reference sketch. That's the way to look at it. So we'll, we'll make the drawing available. You can download it and use his dimensions as a starting point for your own project, but that's the, uh, that's the rack. So these are gonna go home, and these will be the new homes for the 78-inch Edge 540, the 85-inch Extra NG, the 73-inch Slick, and all my 60-inch Extreme Flight planes, and my other bigger balsa planes. That's what's going on in these racks and the wings, because right now, my wings are sitting on a couch. <laughs> yeah, and actually, I think the 92 one fits on there, too. <laughs> on that note, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy. Hasta la vista, guys.